let's talk about the special properties of inscribed polygons. Inscribed is just a fancy word for draw inside of a circle. In obviously means inside, and scribe means write. So this word literally translates to write inside. So if I draw a triangle inside of a circle or a quadrilateral inside of a circle, let's discuss the special properties of drawing a shape inside of a circle. And I'd like you to start with an experiment. Given circle D with diameter AB, draw another point somewhere on the circle. Now remember, the circle is actually just the black ring around the outside, so don't draw C inside of this yellow area, that's the area of the circle. We want to draw a point called C somewhere on the circle itself. Then I want you to connect A to C and B to C and see what you've created. It should be a triangle. What kind of triangle did you create? And you can try this multiple times by putting multiple point C's anywhere on the circle and creating a new triangle. So I'd like you to pause the video and try it now. Well, let's compare. I'm going to put point C right here. So if I connect A to C and C to B, I created a triangle. Or I could have also put point C right here and connect A to C and C to B, and I get another triangle. What do you suppose is special about each of these triangles? Whether it's the two that I've drawn on my diagram or whatever you drew on your diagram, what kind of triangles are these? They would all have to be a right triangle. Remember that inscribed angles are equal to half of the central angle that they intercept. And ACB is an inscribed angle because its vertex is on the circle, and it intercepts this angle, ADB. That's its central angle. And ADB has to be 180 degrees because it's a straight line, so angle C would have to be half of that, so C has to be 90. And same idea whether you talk about this C or that C or wherever you put your C, no matter where you draw point C on this circle, it's going to create a right triangle. But that's only going to be true if AB is given as a diameter, because that would mean that it's a central angle that measures 180 degrees. So I'd like us to prove that again, but in a different way. I want you to draw a right triangle anywhere you want to in this circle so that all three of its vertices are on the circle. Remember that on the circle means it's actually on the black rim of the circle, not inside of the circle. An easy way to do this is to take the corner of your paper and put it somewhere on the circle and trace the edges of your paper from that corner until they meet the other sides of the circle. Pause the video and try it now. Well, here's what I ended up with. One of my triangles I drew right here. So I put my right angle for my right triangle right here and extended it until it hit the circle again and extended the other side so it hit the circle again and I created this right triangle. And then I drew another right triangle right here. Here's my right angle and I extended that until it hit the circle again and I extended that until it hit the circle again and connected it into a triangle. What do you notice about both of these triangles? Both of their hypotenuses are diameters. Remember that the hypotenuse is the side that's across from the right angle, and for both of these triangles, the hypotenuse is also a diameter. So what we've learned with these two experiments is that in order to inscribe a right triangle in a circle, the hypotenuse must be a diameter. Or conversely, if you have a triangle that's been inscribed in a circle and one of its sides is a diameter, then that must mean that one of the angles is right. So let's put that knowledge to use. How could I calculate the value of x given that this triangle has been inscribed in circle G and that one of the three sides of the triangle is a diameter? Well, that information guarantees that this has to be a right triangle and that angle E has to be a 90 degree angle. So I can set 5x equal to 90 and find out that x must be 18 degrees. We can do something similar to help us figure out the acute angle measurements. Here I have triangle KLM, which has been inscribed in circle N, and one of the three sides of the triangle is a diameter. So that guarantees that this is a right triangle, 
which means these are the two acute angles of that right triangle. And according to the corollary to the triangle sum theorem, I can add those two angle measurements together and set it equal to 90. Or if you don't remember the corollary, you can just add all three of the angle measurements together. So 3z minus 5 plus 2z plus 90 and set the whole thing equal to 180 degrees. Either way, you would find out that z has to be 19 degrees. Well, that's all you need to know about inscribing right triangles into a circle, but let's talk about inscribing quadrilaterals in circles. Remember that inscribe means to draw inside of. Specifically, it means that all of the vertices must be on the circle. So I'd like you to try to draw each of these five quadrilaterals inside of this circle so that all four of the vertices are on the circle. See which ones it's possible for and which ones it's not possible for, and then try to come up with a reason for why it's possible or not possible. Pause the video and try it now. Well, let's see how you did. A parallelogram looks like this. It has two pairs of opposite sides that are parallel, and I can get three of my four vertices onto the circle, but not all four. Whereas if I stretch it out a little bit into a rectangle, then it works. I can get all four of my vertices on the circle. So for a rectangle, my answer is always. But for a parallelogram, well, it would work if I stretched it into a rectangle. What about a rhombus? A rhombus would look like this. I could get two of my vertices on the circle, but not all four. But what if I stretched that rhombus into a square? Well, a square is just another kind of a rectangle, and we already knew rectangles worked, so squares, the answer is always. Rhombus, only if it's a square, or only if it's a rectangle. And what about trapezoids? Can you make all trapezoids work, or just some of them? Well, the only one that you can actually get all four of the vertices on the circle is isosceles trapezoids. If it's just a normal trapezoid, then you can't actually inscribe it. So what's the common theme here? Why are some of these always and some of these are only sometimes if certain characteristics are true? Come up with a rule for what will guarantee that a quadrilateral would be able to be inscribed in a circle. What do rectangles and squares and isosceles trapezoids have in common? Because you might be looking at rectangle and square and thinking, oh, well, they have to be right angles. But that's not necessarily true, right? Because we inscribed this isosceles trapezoid in this circle, and there are definitely not right angles. So what are we actually looking at here? The answer is if opposite angles are supplementary. So obviously for rectangles and squares, all of their angles are 90, so their opposite angles would have to add up to 180 degrees, which means they're supplementary. But that's also true for isosceles trapezoids. I know that this angle plus this angle has to be 180 degrees, and this angle plus this angle has to be 180 degrees. So that's our rule for inscribed quadrilaterals. If a quadrilateral has been inscribed in a circle, then the measures of each of its pairs of opposite angles must be equal to 180 degrees. It's important to note that it's not just squares, rectangles, and isosceles trapezoids that can be inscribed, it's random quadrilaterals as well. Like this quadrilateral that we have inside of circle E, is quadrilateral ABCD, and it's just a quadrilateral. It's not special, it's not a trapezoid, it's not a rectangle, it's not a square, it's not a rhombus. It's just a random quadrilateral whose opposite angles happen to add up to 180 degrees. So let's try another one like that and determine can this quadrilateral be inscribed in a circle. In order for that to be true, I would need to know that the sum of the opposite angles adds up to 180 degrees. So let's see if that's true. 122 plus 58, yep, that's 180. And 85 plus 95 is also 180. So yes, this quadrilateral can be inscribed in a circle. Let's try another one. In order for this quadrilateral to be able to be inscribed in a circle, the sum of the opposite angles have to be equal to 180. So let's add 98 to 98. Well, that's not 180. And let's add 108 and 56. That's also not 180. So it's not possible to inscribe this quadrilateral in a circle. 
We can also use an inscribed quadrilateral to calculate missing angle measurements, because if the quadrilateral has been inscribed in the circle, then that guarantees that the opposite angles must add up to 180. So I can say that 59 plus x equals 180, so x must be 121, and that 88 plus y is equal to 180, so y must be 92. And that's all you need to know about inscribing quadrilaterals and triangles in a circle. In the next part of this lesson, we're going to put all of the previous three videos together and solve for missing angle measurements and arc measurements in circles.